Hello, hello, Ederson Oliveira here. In this video, I'll be talking about how to work with dictionaries in C Sharp. So, first of all, what is a dictionary? A dictionary is a hash table with key value pairs. But what does it mean? It means that each item of a dictionary has two values. One is the key. In our case here, for the example of a movie, we have the movie ID as the key. And the other value is the value that is linked to the key. For example, for this movie ID, this is the movie data that is stored there. This is the movie object. But you may say, Ederson, we already have the ID of the movie in the movie object. Why do we need the ID to be in this other slot as well, in the key slot? Because the ID will be the, you can call it the primary key, the unique key linked to that movie. The main use of a dictionary is to be able to find the entries quickly without having to do a full scan of the collection. You can go straight away to any item based on the ID without going through a scan. For example, when you look at a, a traditional list, for me to be able to find the last item of this list, I have to scan one by one by one until I find the ID that I'm looking for. Now, when we have a dictionary, things are a little bit different. With a dictionary, if I want to find the movie with this ID, I can go straight to it without having to scan the entire dictionary. So that's the main advantage of using dictionaries instead of just lists. It depends on your use case. If you need to be able to reach items quickly, use a dictionary but a few restrictions, actually a main restriction, the ID or the key, it has to be unique. It cannot be null, it has to be unique as well. You cannot have duplications of the key. So for example, maybe the movie title is not a good idea to be the key as we can potentially have movies with the same name, but the ID is unique. So in this video about dictionaries, you're going to be looking at how to create a dictionary, how to add items to the dictionary, how to loop through a dictionary, search the dictionary, and remove items from the dictionary. I have already set up a project for us, and we're going to be using the movie class with a bunch of properties, including ID, the name of the movie, description category, and a bunch more other properties. We're going to be creating a dictionary that will have the key as the movie ID and the value as the movie object. So to be able to declare a dictionary, we have to use the namespace system.collections.generics, generic. And here I can declare a dictionary, which is declared with two generics. I can provide the type of the first generic, which is the key. So the key of our dictionary is the ID, which is an integer. I'm going to use, I'm going to say that this is an integer. And the second one is the value. So you have the key and the value. The value will be a movie. This class here that I have defined it. I'm going to call this my movies. And we're going to create this guy as a new dictionary. So this is how you create, you define a dictionary. Next, I'm going to add items to the dictionary. So to do that, I'm going to refer to my dictionary dot adds, and then I can define the ID of the new movie. Here's the ID and I can create a new movie object. So the first parameter is the key and the second one is the actual value, the actual object in our case, the movie. So I'm just going to paste here the details of the movie. We have the ID, the name, description, category, rating, year in box office revenue. I'm going to repeat the same process for 10 movies so that we can have some variety and be able to experiment a little bit more. So I have added here 10 movies, as you can see. Now we can experiment with the other features of the dictionary. How about we try looping through the dictionary now? There are different ways to loop through it. We're going to use, first of all, a four, and then we're going to try the same with a four each. So to use a for, we can do this for int i from zero, i less than 
my dictionary, which is my movies, dot count, and I++. So we're going to be using a counter, using an index to reach each element of the dictionary to go from the first one to the very last one. For that, we're going to be using the collection, but the keys, which can behave as a separate collection here. And I'm going to use the element at method, but element at method is uh, an extension method that comes with another namespace. I'm going to add a second namespace here, which is sync system dot link. Link will allow us to extend our collections here. So if I say keys dot element at, I can use that to access each element of the keys collection by the index i starting from zero, going all the way up to count minus one. So by doing that, we have access to the key. Now with the key, I can access the corresponding move that has that key. So just to make things simpler, I'm going to declare a variable here. I'm going to call this key. I'm going to set it to this ID. And then I'm going to use key to access the movie. I can declare a secondary variable here and I can access the movie based on the key because this is the advantage of the dictionary. You can just inform the key and it returns back the value corresponding to that key, in our case, the movie. And then from here, I can output this. I can output this to the console and I can just say value here dot to string and by the way if you go to the class to string is returning the id of the movie the name of the movie the rating and the category so if we run this we should be able to see all 10 movies outputted to the console and there we go now of course you can simplify this you don't have to declare those variables you can just have this in one single line of code you can have this as being the key already and have all of this already here but i just broke it down to separate lines so that you can have a, a better view i think of the different elements of the loop now the next loop that you're going to see is the for each loop with the for each loop you have the option to loop through the key value pair just to the keys collection just to the values collection up to you for example here i can say uh var item in my movies this item here will be a key value pair if i try to access item i can access it by just calling item dot key this is the key information of the key value pair i can also access the item dot value value is the movie and for example i can say to string here we're going to print out the key and the value of each entry in the dictionary. Actually, let's use just a write. We're going to have a little duplication here because I'm printing key here and the true string has also the key here, the ID, but that's okay. If we run this, we can see here the first 10 from the first four and the four each here. Of course, this is a bit messy. Let's fix this. Let's create Let's add some space here. So I'm going to use the string interpolation and I'm going to say key and I'm going to put a, a pipe here. I'm just going to add key, the pipe and the value there. And let's add, let's keep a line here. So I'm going to say here, this is uh, for each and I'm just going to put some dashes here to give a little bit more space. I'm going to say here, this is a uh, four and this will separate things out. So I'm going to just say right line and this is right line as well. These are all right line. Okay. And now it's going to be slightly better organized here. You can see both of them very separately. Great. So we have using four, we have in use for each, for each you can access the key and you can access the value as well. As I said, the advantage of this dictionary is to avoid looping to find items. So the next point that you're going to be looking at is how to search quickly within a dictionary. Search becomes very easy using the dictionary. If I 
gather some input from the user. I'm going to just say here, console right line. I'm going to give it a space there. Right line again here. And I'm going to say, enter the movie ID. And I'm going to collect this information from the user. I'm going to say var ID equals to console dot read line. And I'm going to collect the ID. I'm going to convert this ID, this read line from a string to an integer because this is the type of our ID. So I'm going to just say int dot parse. Not going to care about validation here. And I'm just going to say my movies in square brackets, the ID that I have declared here. This will give me the movie. So I can just say something like this. I can say var the movie is equal to this. And then I can just print this out. I can say console right line and I can just print the movie dot to string. And we're going to be able to find the movie that we are looking for. Now, of course, if the movie is not found, we could potentially test this. We could say if the movie is equal to null, we can just write movie not found else the name of the move, the data of the move, the information. So here at the bottom, enter the movie ID. I'm just going to grab, let's say this one here, paste it here, hit enter, and it shows the information of the movie. If we try this again and we put a number that cannot be found, let's see. Oops, we have an error right here. So if it cannot be found right here, we have to handle this. Actually, a movie can be null, but the fact that the movie is not present in the collection, this is another story. So we have to use something here to be able to handle this problem. We can actually use a method called contains key from the dictionary. So I can say if my dot contain contains key and I can pass the key here. This is the ID. Then we can try this. So before trying to find the ID, the movie, we check if the movie is there. If it is, we do this. And if the movie is null, it means that there is an entry for the movie, but the movie is invalid. So I can just say movie is not available. And then with this one here, I can say movie not found. This would be a movie not found. And I think that we are good here. Let's give it a try again with an invalid key or not invalid, but a key that cannot be found. And there we go. And now we have that movie ID not found. Last topic. Let's talk about how to remove items from the dictionary. To remove items is quite simple. You just have to use the ID, the key to find the item and use a method called remove to remove the item. So I'm going to write to skip a line and write here removing an item. I'm going to ask the user to enter the item to be removed. So we're going to say console right line, please enter the ID of the movie to be removed. I'm just going to use right to stay in the same line. And I'm going to just capture that as I did before. I'm going to say var. Well, we have an ID already there declared, so I might just reuse it. So ID equals to int parse, we have to convert the console read line. And then we just say my movies dot remove and I can give the key, which is the ID. Now to prove that the movie was removed, we should loop again. So I'm going to use one of those loops. I'm going to use the for each here, which is a simpler one to print out the list of movies to prove that the item has been successfully removed. Let's give this a try. So first off, we're going to try to find an ID. That's OK. And now removing an item. Please enter the ID of the move to be removed. So let's try to remove the first one to make it very obvious. So let's select this one here and let's paste there. Let's give it a try. We have removed this. As you can see, the first item, which is iRobot, is no longer within the list. It's starting from the AI artificial intelligence. So this is how you remove an item from the dictionary. I hope that this gave you a good understanding of how to use dictionary 
Again, the main use of dictionary is to be able to search quickly based on a key. Select the key well. The key has to be unique. The key cannot be null. Based on the key, you can retrieve quickly the value associated with that key. That's it for now. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye for now.